Florida homeowners were urged to kill invasive green iguanas whenever possible. The Florida Fish and Wildlife System, the state's actually encouraging us to get rid of them. But what you're about to see goes way beyond cruel. They got it in the oh my God. The video, tough to watch. Teenage boys torturing this almost lifeless iguana until they kill it. Oh my God. The video going viral since Florida conservation authorities urged homeowners to exterminate the invasive green iguanas. An exotic animal show, but a bill moving through Florida Senate could change events like this in the future. Growing up, I always wanted to work with animals, and when I found out I could do this for a living, it was a no-brainer. But a bill that just passed the Florida Senate last week could change what all tiki's geckos and other reptile breeders can sell. Us as breeders, we want to keep selling these animals because we think they're amazing. We think that a lot of people enjoy and benefit from these animals, but at the same time, we understand, you know, we don't want to destroy the environment. The United States Association of Reptile Keepers feel that laws are too limiting and don't actually solve problems. A very slippery slope. They continue to add more and more species that have been regulated and successfully regulated for the last decade. Utrera thinks a mix of legislation and responsible breeders and owners could help the issue. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has forced us and other reptile keepers in the state of Florida to get rid of our beloved pets. Over the last few years, FWC has been putting more and more restrictions on what Florida keepers can have. They have claimed that they don't want to hinder our businesses and our livelihood, but their actions show otherwise. FWC claims they are imposing these strict laws because of the invasive populations in South Florida. Now, the problem with these laws that they're imposing on us is that they're doing nothing to actually help the population of invasives in the wild. So all the cages you guys see right here behind me is where all of my tegus, my personal tegus, my pets, this is where they used to live and I had to get rid of every single one of them because I did not meet the guidelines for their caging here in the state of Florida. Now these are animals that I raised from the time they were small babies to strong adults. I, I never had an escape, I never had any issues, any accidents or anything like that, yet I still had to pay and go by the, the laws that, that just changed. When it comes to these tegus they, and, and these iguanas, this is just the start of this. You know, they're still gonna come after any animal that could basically live outside in Florida and that could risk becoming invasive. These guys are our pets. We're not, not just our pets, but a lot of us make a living out of this. So it's not like we're gonna allow a $10,000 animal to get away or a $1,000 animal to get away. Just with this new law change, I lost over $30,000 in animals, but that's the least of it because I got into this business, I got into this hobby because I love these animals. And now I can't keep these animals and I can't even show my kids these animals. For the rest of the time that I am in the state of Florida, I won't be able to own another tegu, iguana, Burmese python, reticulated python, and countless other species that are to come. If we didn't get rid of our tegus and iguanas, we could get a second degree misdemeanor for each animal. And if FWC came and we had the animals here, they would euthanize them on the spot. And we know plenty of friends who have gone through this traumatic experience. One of the many things that don't make sense about these laws is that they restricted people from wild catching tegus and iguanas and then shipping them out of state. That is not alleviating the natural ecosystem of these invasives and it actually causing their populations to increase in the wild. Now for people who already have tegus and iguanas, you can get pet permits. The problem is that these cage requirements are unrealistic. They need double doors, concrete, bottom and sides. These cages are costing about $10,000 each. That's basically a way of telling you you have to get rid of your tegu without directly saying you have to get rid of them. Now, the big thing about these laws is that it's really not giving us much hope for the future. We, this is our business, this is our livelihood. This is the reason why we live in Florida. If we can't keep our animals outside and give them the best possible life, we don't really wanna live in the state of Florida. So. 
by, uh, by them coming after us and taking away animal by animal by animal, it's really making us think that, you know, they don't want us in the industry and they want us out of Florida because guess what? If I can't keep these animals, I'm leaving this state. I don't want to be in a place where I'm going to be, you know, uh, that they're going to come after me because I keep these animals. Anything that can survive outside the state of Florida and possibly become an invasive species is in danger of being banned in Florida. And the thing is, most reptiles are going to be able to live in Florida. It's the perfect habitat. It's humid, it's warm, it's, you know, there's plenty of grass and fruit for animals to eat. So it's really a haven for reptiles. By them saying that anything that lives in Florida that they don't want us to keep, is really closing the doors on most of the pets that we could have. FWC just passed the new law that any minor violation, something as small as a verbal warning, could be grounds for terminating your class three permit. Now in the state of Florida, you need a class three license to be able to sell animals inside of the state. So if you do get one of these violations and they do decide to revoke your permits, they can decide to confiscate every single animal that you have, even the ones like a red foot tortoise that you don't need a permit to own. They can literally take away your pets and just you just have to deal with it. The FWC commissioners claim that they're not coming after us, but the way it's written in the legislation say that any violation can result in the revocation of your permit. So anything from an administrative mistake from my end or their end could cause them to revoke my permit the way I make a living and take away my pets, my animals. Anything on my inventory, even if it's not something for sale, they could decide they wanna take it away and I don't get to touch that animal for three years and I don't get to work in this field for three years and I have 90 days to get rid of my animals. When you have thousands of animals and this is your whole livelihood, 90 days isn't enough to get rid of all these animals and it just isn't fair. Now what is scary about these laws is that at a drop of a dime, 10 years of dreams, 10 years of hard work, 10 years of building a business could be out the window. What you can do to help is first of all, follow USR Florida. They keep us up to date on everything that's going on, all the new laws, and also show up to our local FWC meetings. We gotta show up in numbers, we gotta voice our opinions. Tell them that we are against these new laws. And also remember guys, contact your commissioners, your governor, Governor DeSantis. We need to get his attention to what's going on. They're taking away our pets, they're taking away our rights, and this is not right. We have a copy and paste email that you could send them out. And remember, if you don't do anything about it, when they take away everything, there's nothing you could say. Thank you.